Reddit. What is the most f ked up way you got back at someone that wronged you throwaway is encouraged. I'm immune to poison ivy. So I was always uprooting it in our yard, about a full acre. I'd left it on this concrete area behind our garage, because that's where it was near when I pulled it out. Hey. I was am lazy. Comma anyway I frequently walked down to a fishing pond across this canal in my neighborhood. This is in South Louisiana. I didn't always have a functioning bike and the walk was only about a mile. A big kid. Probably 2-3 years older than me. Was a real jerkus. He'd do stuff like ride by me on his bike and act like he was gonna high five me. But then slap my face and ride off. Laughing. Anyway. One day he did that. And I went back home. Upset. I got my water gun and was gonna shoot him if he messed with me again. Then I saw the poison ivy and got an evil idea. In the bucket it went with some water. Stirred it all up good. Then dumped that in my water gun. Went back to the pond. On the way back home he came around messing with me again. I hosed him down and he broke my gun. But man it was worth it. From what I hear he didn't go back to school for almost two weeks. I have one I'm about to do in a couple days. See my parents suck. I've been taking care of them for a while. While also going to school and whatnot, And still they are trying to cheat me. Pawn my things. Etc. But I've become fed up with them. I'm out of town at the moment. But when I get back. The next time they ask me to walk 2 miles to get them a pack of cigarettes. I will walk outside. Around the house. Have a friend with a van come. Bring my pre-packed tea out of the basement entrance. Leave and stay at my friend's house for a few days until the day my train ticket is planned for. Then move 2000 miles across the country and live with another friend who just got me a job. Rendering them worthless pillheads waiting for a pack of Pal Mal Menthol 100s for the rest of their sad lives. My sister used to beat me up. Steal my birthday money. Call me a fog in front of friends and girls I liked. When mom went shopping for Christmas my sister would tell her to buy me these horrible clothes to make me look the part. Pretty much was just a total BTCH to me. So every time I had to pee in the shower I'd pee in her shampoo and body wash all over her razor. Body sponge thing. Everything. FCK you Vanessa. My brother once stole my bag of skittles and didn't admit to it. So I bought a bag and opened it carefully so that I could reseal it. I took every skittle. Except the green apple. Out and replaced them with M and Amp. MS. The look on his face was priceless. Edit. For clarification there were M and MS and green skittles in the bag. And he ate by the handful. So. No. It would not be delicious. My friend got roofied and raped by a frat FCK about a decade ago at a local high toned university. Despite a shitting of evidence. He was never arrested. Never expelled. Never had to face any sort of penalty for this and managed to get my friend labeled a SLT who totally wanted it and was now only pretending it was our pay because he wouldn't break up with his girlfriend for her. Pretty charming guy. Really. I put capsicum extract in his eye drops. Fuck throwaways because I'm proud of this shit. My best friend since I was 3 years old. Started texting and flirting. Then eventually sleeping with my boyfriend of 7 years. He was apologetic. Regretful. And begging him for me back. As was she. It was a mistake they said. Never happen again they said. Until it happened again. Well my best friend had this obsessive relationship with this guy Billy. Who was so heartbroken by her infidelity. He came to me. He felt like a loser having just lost both his girl and his job. So I hired him at my job where I was a manager. We became good friends. And my now ex best friend was going nuts. I then started a rumor that Billy and I were dating and serious about it. She saw us in a car together. While I was bringing him home. And went fking nuts. She started driving like a psycho. And texting me saying how could you do this to me. Why would you do this to me. Buit I ignored them. I dipped off the road. And dropped him off at home. And unfortunately had to fire him for stealing money from work. All in all. I got my revenge. I fked with her head. 
I f would with my ex's head. Got them all upset. But never actually did the horrible act of cheating that they did. But they all think I did. And I'm okay with that. My neighbor knocked my dad's motorcycle and simply left it on the floor. It smashed a mirror and they didn't even leave their insurance details. My dad refused to call the police. Saying they probably didn't notice. Yet I saw them look at it and proceed to carry on with their usual lives. This annoyed me so much. I decided to call 20 taxes. 5 Chinese takeaways. And a stripper dressed as a policeman to their house all for 1am in the morning. It was a really dickish thing to do but we all do stupid things. Right? My girlfriend of 3 years that I dated through high school broke up with me my first semester of college. We went to different schools and I later learned she was hooking up with one of her guy friends there. Anyways when we both were on break she asked me to bring back all the stuff she had given me. Presents. Sweatshirts. Cards. ETC. So I drive to her house with all the things we've exchanged in the past 3 years. Once I got to her house I saw that she had invited all her friends over and they were sitting with her along with her parents in the garage. Anyways I walk up with her shti and exchange. Everyone there had that smirk on their face like they were laughing at me. Anyways as I give her back her things I say if only I could give back your virginity the look on her parents faces was absolutely priceless. And I walked out of that lion's den with the biggest smile on my face. My first high school BF was not very good with grades so he asked me to make him a fake report so he could show his parents and not get into trouble. He also cheated on me with my best friend and dumped me. He then promised to get back with me if I forged the report for him. I agreed up until the day when we were meant to get our reports for school. I told him I didn't do it. He got bashed by his dad when he got home for the string of D's and F's. My so called best friend in primary school stole my shiny Pokemon cards. I was only 6 or so at the time. But that didn't stop me from being a sadistic little first grader. And having older brothers. Well. Let's just say I knew how things worked. Guess who found out the truth about Santa? The Tooth Fairy and the Power Rangers all at once. Don't FCK with 6 year old me. I had a friend in high school who became an arsehole during our senior year. There were a bunch of little things that added up to our friendship falling apart. But at the worst of it I pooped on his car one night. Real simple. I just crawled up on the hood of his car and took a shti on his windshield. I just knew that he'd walk outside the next day and think. What the FCK is this? Double quote. Fun fact. We're actually great friends again now. He still has no idea it was me. At an all male military boarding school during high school. There was this huge douche on my hall. We took his Febreze bottle and filled it with piss. Then took said bottle and sprayed his pillow. Wall locker and opposite corner. So he gets back. Smells urine and immediately grabs his Febreze and douses everything. Eat a dick. Donovan. Eat. A. Dick. My past girlfriend cheated on me. And her and her roommate at the time had gotten to that point in their lease where they weren't super fond of each other and kept some distance. Her roommate was smoking hot. Kind of bitchy sometimes. And wasn't fond of my ex so I decided to make a move on her. Best move ever. The look on my ex's face when her roommate walked me to the door in her underwear after the first night was priceless. We proceeded to have hot. Dirty. Loud SX almost nightly for next 8 weeks until their lease was up and for a while after that. My ex even walked in on us in the living room once. Kinda dickish. But goddamn was it fun and there's no way I felt bad about it. TLDR. My GF cheated on me. I have loud awesome SX with her roommate until the lease is up. Edit. And so it came to pass that the highest voted thing I will ever post on reddit was under a throwaway in a what's the most f up thing you've ever done thread lol. From another post. When I was 7 or 8 I did a science project on the antibacterial efficacy of various soaps. Basically involved keeping hands dirty for a day. Pressing grubby thumbs into petri dishes full of agar. Then washing and doing the same again. I'd take tracings of the cultures. Bigger colonies were bad. Smaller ones good. 
This ended up winning the county science fair for my grade in a large metropolitan area. So that was nice. But before that. After I'd finished the experiments but before I'd discarded the dishes. I got into a dispute with my parents, don't remember what about. I thought. I'll show them. So I took the nastiest culture and swabbed it onto their bedroom doorknob. They both got sick as dogs and I had to take care of them for a couple of days. Served me right. TLDR. I waged bacteriological warfare against my parents using my science project. But I told them long ago and we laugh about it now. Where to begin? This one time I had just gotten a house outside Atlanta. I was so pleased with it as it was the first time I'd had a proper place to live. Mostly sleeping at work. We're a delivery company and I don't get on that well with most of my colleagues. I try but they just don't like me. Anyway. One of them burnt down my house when he left his cigar on the floor. The worst part is that no one cared. Not even my best friend Herms. I got him back though. I soaked him with my ink pouch before escaping. My sister was dating this guy for a while and moved in with him about 2 years ago. She moved back home 6 months later because he raped her. My whole family wanted to press charges. But my sister flat out refused. Saying he didn't mean to unch tea like that. Fast forward a year later. The guy and a few of his friends got drunk and set off fireworks in some school buses in my hometown. Being drunk. He immediately told my sister about it. And she told me. I turned around with no hesitation and told the cops. He's still awaiting sentencing as far as I know. His friends turned on him for lighter sentences. He got kicked out of school and lost both his jobs. And I am so glad I did it. I was living with a guy at university who kept taking my food without even asking. And never paid me back. I woke up. Wanting to eat some cornflakes before my long day at uni. But all my milk was gone. That was the last straw. So I went to the local shop. Got two pints of milk. And proceeded to ejaculate into it that same night. Went to sleep and woke up to find that most of it was gone. With a note saying I'll pay you back. It tasted a bit off. Confused. He drank it even though it tasted off. I'm picturing your roommate taking multiple sips. Like a milk connoisseur or something. Slight overturns of sperm. I do believe. Double quote. About 4 years ago. I found out my husband of 10 years was fking around with a girl he went to high school with. It should be noted that they never dated because. According to him. She was too much of a wh ray not to fck more than one dude at a time. At this time. I was a full time student and he was financially supporting us and our toddler. When I found out. I flipped shit. Understandably. He called me a psycho and decided he wanted to leave me for her. So I quit school for a year. Worked two jobs. Paid for the divorce and supported our child by myself. I ended up supporting myself through school. Graduating with honors. Landing my dream job and generally kicking ass on my own. P. On the other hand. Has been cheated on several times. Lives in a shitty trailer park with his wh re girlfriend and generally is a loser. Technically not f up revenge. Just very very sweet. Edit thanks for the props. Dudes. My degree was in culinary arts. I now work for an amazing catering company and am a personal chef on the side. I love what I do. My kid is a fking rockstar and generally I am doing better than I ever thought I would. Didn't do this. But I witnessed it. I was at camp and there was this one really obnoxious kid who kept getting on everyone's nerves. He was a know-it-all and a tattletale. So one night we're in the bunk area and it's just me and this other guy that had the bunk across from me. The little douche had left a giant bag of Twizzlers open on his bed that was still about 3 stroke 4 full. The guy across from me noticed the Twizzlers. Hopped down off his bunk and said watch this. He then proceeds to take every Twizzler and rub his balls with them. An hour later when the kid came back I had to leave because I couldn't hold in my laughter at the sight of that little bastard eating his Twizzlers. When I was around 13 stroke 14 I used to hang out with my 21 year old neighbors. 
I didn't realize at the time that all these guys would do is convince me to do stupid shit then run away when I got in trouble. This continued until I was about 17 when I finally realized what was going on. I was furious and wanted revenge but by the time I thought up a plan these guys had moved. I decided I would make my move anyways. These guys were serious stoners and always had parties. I went to a party once and chilled in the back. In my car I had 5 cartons of heavy whipping cream that I had purchased 6 months prior. I left them in the fridge until that day. I took each carton and poured one in each of the air vents. I had one carton left over so I poured it into the AC unit, not sure if it did anything. The smell coming from the cartons was so rancid and disgusting I had to stop myself from barfing a few times. A few weeks later the house was up for sale. No one would buy it because of the smell though, or so I heard. They gave up on selling it and tried burning it down. After an investigation the oldest brother was arrested for fraud and served one year in prison. I haven't heard anything about them since. I worked at a place during college that served sandwiches and cough. It was a cool place. A lot of people hung out there and I liked everyone I worked with. But my boss was the biggest asshole in the world. One week on payday he got all the employees together and told us that we wouldn't be getting paid that week and we would have to wait until next week. We were fine with that but when the next payday rolled around he didn't have the money. This went on for about a month. We were all working under the table and he told us that if we quit we would never get any of the money he owed us. We later found out he never planned on paying us. We found out he was blowing his cash on cook and gambling. He stopped showing up to work for like 3 weeks so it was just the employees running the store. In those 3 weeks we gave away pretty much everything in the store for free. Literally emptied it out. Anyone who came in and ordered something got it for free. We even had a party the one night. Open mic and everything. So he finally shows up and he looks like he has been awake for a week straight. He comes in freaking the FCK out. Threatens to beat the shitty out of us. Starts throwing things around. I was in the back and saw that he was double parked outside. So I call the campus towing company that was literally a block away. While he is freaking out at us one of the employees says. Hey. Your truck is getting towed. He runs outside and watches his escalade get towed away. We all bounced out the back door and never looked back. I had a loud ass apartment neighbor that was always causing problems. My wife got fed up one night when him and his drunk friends were wrestling in the parking lot while making a ton of noise and called the cops. This was an angry drunk Mexican that decided to retaliate for the cops getting called by breaking my antenna off my car as soon as the cops leave. I fumed about the antenna for a week or so when the DCK came back home drunk again at 6am again waking me up as he thundered up the stairs. It wasn't till a couple hours later we noticed he left his keys in the door of his apartment. I snuck up the stairs and took his keys right out of the lock and chucked them in a ditch a block away. The best part was hearing him storm around tearing his place up looking for them. You could hear the prick moving furniture and shit. His truck had two separate alarms and after he lost his remotes he had to replace both of them. I regret nothing. When I was 7. The Monica Lewinsky scandal happened. And my name happens to be Monica. You can imagine what a bunch of immature kids like to call me. One girl who was several years older than me. Whom I never talked to before. Kept picking on me and calling me Monica Lewinsky. I asked her to stop. And she didn't. Keep in mind that this girl was pretty big compared to me. One day. She was playing on this jungle gym in the shape of a fire engine and was trying to balance. So I took advantage of her vulnerability and started tickling her. When I noticed she didn't like being tickled and was losing her balance. I continued to tickle. Which was probably my innocent way of being violent. The girl eventually lost her balance. Fell down. And broke her leg. When I saw her later on in a cast with crutches. She looked at me with this apologetic expression and never called me Monica Lewinsky again. She was afraid of me. A little 7 year old girl. I live in a very small town so locking your car doors is not very common. One day my friend played a prank by putting dog tea under my car seat on a hot summer day so my car smelled terrible for a week. 
At this time I was dating his sister and she would send me nude pics. One day I showed him a pic of just her boobs and he got excited and asked me to send it to him. I figured he was going to whack off to it so I sent it to him and then told him a few weeks later who it was. Six years later I'm engaged at his sister and we still have never talked about it. Kind of f-ked up but I don't care. My ex was human garbage. She would continually beg for money and do nothing but yell at me and smoke weed. One day I just got sick of her shit. I came home from a very long day at work and noticed she had taken my Civic, a very heavily modded 94 coupe, and had gone somewhere with her friends. She forgot that I had a car tacking system on the car and could locate it anywhere to within a few meters. I found my car in downtown Seattle and had my buddy drive me there. I had a spare key and alarm fob. So I threw her spare clothes and purse in the dirty parking lot. Drove home and blocked her number before she could even call me. I even moved later that week, had been planning to for a while before this incident anyway, so I disappeared without a trace. I used to get threatening FB messages from her brother for about a month afterwards. Not my revenge. But my uncle got my aunt back pretty damn good. They'd just had their first kid. And he was worried my aunt was dealing with postpartum depression. So when he came home. She took a baby doll and catapulted it at the wall right in front of him. Naturally. He was freaked out. Thinking she lost it and killed the baby. She had a good laugh. But 12 years later he got her back. He was slicing carrots and pretended to accidentally cut his fingers off. She was dialing 911 only to see him in a long overdue fit of laughter. He is a patient man. Wow that was pretty brilliant. I thought mine was good. But yours takes the cake. Anyway. I too dated a cheating girl. But I'll start by saying I'm stupid and took her back after the first time. The first time she cheated it was with her ex-boyfriend. I knew it was happening so I got her phone and got his number and I called him. P. Naturally. Didn't know anything about it and I 100% believe him because she is a scum liar. So we set it up for her to meet him in a park to which I'd be there too. Unfortunately. The ex couldn't follow through with it and then the plans foiled but her double life still blew up in her face. But the better one was I knew she was cheating on me with this dude named Tim. So one afternoon I had her come over to my house. She said she had dinner plans and wouldn't be around that night. So I wanted to fck her one last time so I had her bent over my bed and was fking her doggy style. I took a sharpie marker that I had laying on my nightstand and. While fking her. Rode high Tim on her ass. Again. He knew nothing about me and. Again. Her life blew up in her face. Not really on the fucked up level but it still makes me giggle. I was cocktailing at a super busy microbrewery that was across the parking lot from a big movie theater. Some stupid Twilight or Harry Potter movie came out at night so we got slammed late and it was only me working. These two punkers guys, just turned 21, sat at one of my tables and ran up an $80 bill drinking Long Islands. I overheard them talking about what movie they wanted to see so I knew that's where they were headed. Fast forward to 30 minutes later. They skip out on the entire bill. Left me a folded up $5 bill in the book when it should have been closer to $100. So I told the bartender. Who is 6 feet 5 and 250 pounds and intimidating as hell. Let him know the two shits were going to a movie. He ran across the parking lot and ended up catching them in line. Shook them down for all of the money they had in their pockets and told them never to come back again. I guess the one guy was crying. It was awesome. TLDR don't fck your server over. We're always listening. This one's not too exciting but I thought it was funny as hell. We had an old grumpy bastard living next to us when I was a kid. This guy kept any and all toys that ended up close to his property. This guy called the police on us for literally everything. From 2-3 kids just playing in the yard to our car idling too long in front of his house. So we found a hearse for a couple hundred bucks and got it. Parked that bastard right in front of his house and left it there. Cops were called of course but couldn't do a thing cause it was not on his property. The car sat there for 3 months and he finally moved away. 
My father actually ended up buying that house and gave it to my sister where she currently resides. TLDR we parked a hearse next to an old guy's house who harassed my family. Got him to move away and we bought the house. I had a guy steal $300 bucks from me online via a freelancing site. I paid him for work he never did. Long story short. I found out where he lived via a fake freelancing job and asked to send a check because I'm old and don't know the entire web. I found his telephone number and called it. A young lady answered and I asked for scumbag freelancer. She said he wasn't home. Verified. I found a company online that breeds cockroaches. I called and ordered 100. The operator asked if I wanted them pregnant or sterile. I said pregnant. My order was shipped. I opened the box and dumped the 100 prego roaches into a post office box and sealed that fucker quick. Mailed it to scumbag freelancer so he could open Natch tea in his house. Then I called him from a payphone and asked him how his roaches were. He began to cuss me out. I told him don't fck with a fucker and hung up. I dated this girl for around 3 years. And we had the most incredibly passionate yet violent relationship. Towards the end we did anything to hurt each other. And were doing the off again on again thing. At one point when we were on again she had asked to do some laundry at my house and brought over all her clothes. I'm talking everything. Three laundry baskets. With the exception of the clothes she was wearing everything. Now it's important to know that not only was she huge into trendy and fashionable clothes. But she also worked as a manager at a local thrift store in a swanky part of town where she would acquire her wardrobe. So the next day she informs me she doesn't want to see me that night and that she is doing a booty call with this guy I hate. So I took all of her clothes and donated them to her thrift store. Figured she could buy them back. Less of a wronged me and more of a wronged a buddy. In high school a girl decided to stand up my best friend who was the nicest guy you could ever meet. And she was far out of his league. Afterwards she proceeded to spread rumors and trash talk him for no reason. He was extremely shook up and a bit suicidal for a while and it hurt to see. I took it upon myself to lead the girl on for an entire year with this plan in my mind. I invited her to her senior prom and made plans for all of this fun stuff with people we knew. We picked out matching clothing blah 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 all that fun stuff. And then I went back after hours and changed my order. I changed our plans with friends and invited someone I really enjoyed spending my time with. Prom night rolled around and I had a corsage delivered to her house with a note that said remember last year? Dot. I turned off my phone and enjoyed my time with friends and effectively ruined a girl's senior prom a year in the planning. TLDR. Don't treat my friends like shit. I took a couple French classes early on in high school. In my second year there were a lot of seniors that sat near me who either weren't very smart or simply didn't care enough about their grade to actually study. Didn't help that during every single test. The teacher wouldn't stop them whenever they'd scoot over their desks to get a better view of my test, I was a straight A type student. This same teacher also liked to give out little passes for wearing the school colors on Fridays. Things like. Plus 10 on a quiz. No homework for a night and even a free 100% on a test. Well. I finally got the free test pass and saved it for one of the easier ones. When the test started. I intentionally wrote down all of the wrong answers. Doing so slowly enough that my half of the room would have plenty of time to do their copying and then turned it in. Stapling on the free 100% just before handing it in, no one noticed. People were pretty ticked off when they figured out why I was the only one on my side of the room that didn't horribly fail that test and teacher mentioned that it was a pretty mean way to handle it. But those punks never cheated off my tests the rest of the year. Feels good man. Back in high school. I did a bad thing and basically stole a friend's gf. I knew nothing of dating etiquette. Let alone the man code. They had been broken up for over a month, only dated a month, and she wanted to hang out. Well. 16 year old me thought. Yay. Bubes. And that was that we started dating. Bob started being a real dick. Threatened violence a few times. But never did anything. He had other friends who would do random things. Like shut my locker before I had finished or mess with my food. 
I did a decent job of ignoring it until they started messing with my parents' car. Since I went to an inner city school, we all had to park on the street. They'd pour garbage can contents all over the car. They'd egg the car. One time they even put motor oil on the windshield. There is only so much I can hide from my parents. I was by no means a popular kid. But I was friendly with every clique. One day I complained to some thuggy friends of mine about what was happening. I was told. And I quote. You don't need to worry about this anymore. Double quote. I think it was later that week. Bob's car was found on the front steps of the school. Stripped to the frame save for the license plates. I felt really bad. But then again. I never got bothered after that. Sorry Bob. Hope you were able to recover from that and that you've found good friends and a good so. This probably isn't that f ked up. But I'll post it anyway. I'm in the Royal Air Force and in basic training I began seeing a girl for a while. Then she cheated on me. Unfortunately we were to be on the same 18 month trade training course. But I got over it. Sort of. About a year into trade training we were both pretty drunk and she took me back to her room. One thing led to another and I was fking her pretty well. At least pretty well for me anyway. But she seemed to be really enjoying it. Then. In a moment of clarity. I thought what the fck are you doing? Ben. So as she was sounding like she was about to come. I stopped. Looked her in the eye and said I'm not drunk enough to fck someone like you. And I put my clothes back on and walked out. She was sobbing as I left. A few weeks later she failed an exam and was removed from the course. Never saw her again. Okay I'm not gonna make a throw away for this one and hope I don't get downvoted to hell. A few years ago when. Jay was 17. My mom was having a house built for her by a private contractor. He is a very angry. Manipulative. Redneck alcoholic who basically ripped my mom off of $400. 000 and built the house really shitty. Taking shortcuts. Bribed the county inspector to pass the house on all the inspections. Cost her about another 100. 000 to fix all of his FCK ups. And he also did this to about 7 other people over the course of about 4 years. He was married and had just had twins. So once I found out about the extent of how much he ripped my mom off. And also how he threatened to kill her, indirectly. Thus legally, if she said anything. Bear in mind she was the only single woman he had ripped off. So he took major advantage of her trust in him to do a good job. Well I told my mom I could have him removed from the face of the earth but she wasn't fond of that idea. So I made a fake Facebook account of some woman and messaged his wife and told her he was having an affair with me. Two weeks later she packed up her whole house and took herself and her kids halfway across the country to live with her parents. He is now being sued by six people and has his millions of dollars in debt because his wife was financing his business. But not after she left him. Stupid redneck jackass. Don't fck with my mom. I guess I'm kind of a mama's boy. TLDR contractor ripped my mom off of $500. 000. I ruined his marriage for revenge.